Hi everybody, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. I've got a lovely friend called Jen, um, who I know from my running club, and she's just done an Ironman triathlon, um, which is, uh, I don't if you know, um, it's a crazy, crazy event where you do a really long swim, a really long cycle, and a really long run, a marathon at the end, and you have something like 24 hours to do it in. Um, she, my friend has just done her first ever Ironman and she smashed it in 13 hours. She's absolutely amazing. Um, so I want to, um, make her a painting to, to represent the Ironman. So she put on her Facebook, a really beautiful photograph, um, of the lake that she swam in. She did this in Austria. So the lake and the mountains. Um, so I'm going to use that. So I'm going to create a landscape and then I'm going to embellish it. I'm going to put the word Iron Man over the top um, in the same lettering that the um, the brand has. Um, just yeah. So just I just want to congratulate her again. Just say, you know, it's just an incredible achievement and I want to give her this just to. Yeah, just as um, just to remind her of it. Um, so let's get started. So I'm doing a voiceover for this pour because when I um, did the painting, my husband was also working in the same room, so I couldn't talk. So these are the colours that I'm using. So Amsterdam cyan blue, Amsterdam king's blue, Montmartre white, Montmartre silver, Amsterdam sky blue light, Pebio Studio acrylics iridescent blue green and De La Rowney Thalo turquoise. So all mixed up there. So they're mixed with PVA glue and water pouring medium. And I'll put the recipe in the description. But I'm just trying to show you here, demonstrate the thickness or the consistency of the paints. So they're, they're reasonably thick, but they flow really nicely. So I'm going to add some of this um, into each of the colours. Um, it's oil, so it's um, hair coconut milk hair serum, and it's an oil. So by adding that into the paint, I'll be able to make some cells. Um, I'm adding it just into the turquoise colours. So the turquoise is going to be the lake, going to be the water. And then the blues and the white, that's going to be the sky. Um, and my plan is to do some ribbon pours. So ribbon pour for the lake and then a ribbon pour for the sky. So I'm just layering up the cups, um, just drizzling some down the side of the cup. And if you can do it that way, it means that the colours will just sit on top of each other really nicely. They won't muddy, they won't mix too much in the cup. Um, they'll mix as they come out the cup and they'll hit the canvas. But this way, it just keeps them separate for as long as possible. So you've got the, the distinction between the colours, actually, when they pour out onto the canvas. So the turquoise and silver's done. And then the blues and the white for the sky now. So I've divided my canvas into two, a smaller part at the top, which I'm pouring onto now for the sky, and then a larger part at the bottom, which will be the lake. So I'm doing a ribbon pour. So literally just pouring from side to side so you can see all the lovely layers, all the different colours coming out. Um, quite a lot of paint on there. So once I've also um, poured the bottom half, I'll then tilt the canvas just to help the lines to really smooth out. Um, yeah, getting that edge covered. Now, I always forget the edge, that top and bottom edge. So I made a special effort there just to pour over the edge. Um, and now the turquoise. If you can really control the cup when you do a ribbon pour. So if you let it pour out fast, you'll get really thick lines. But if you really slow it down, which I tend to do at the end, you can get really fine, pretty lines. So I tend to do the thick lines to start with and now these thinner lines. Um, so a thinner amount of paint and also move the cup quicker. It just it really thins it out. So you can see now really thin lines and I'm moving the cup quite quickly just to get that detail on the surface. So all the paint is down. So there's a few gaps of bare canvas left on the on there. So I'm just tilting it just to try and get those covered. Um, and now I'm just going to tilt one direction. So it, it really pulls all the lines straight and then the other direction. And now I'm going to be pouring, tilting off quite a bit of that paint. 
I'm just playing around with the with the horizon just by moving back and forward slightly to get the um, the angle that I want to. Now there's a big cell at the bottom there which I wasn't happy with so I'm just tilting all the way to get rid of that. And now just having a look, just checking that I'm happy with the length or sorry, so the angle of the horizon, make sure that that's straight enough. So remember, I put the oil in the turquoise colours. So what I'm doing now is with my um, heat gun, with, sorry, with my blowtorch, I'm torching just in lines. So I'm not torching everywhere on that turquoise section. I'm just torching in lines because that way I can get some lines of cells popping up. And I just think they look like bubbles in the water um, or little ripples, little waves. Um, so I'm just trying to be really careful where I torch. Not everywhere, just in very specific places. So you can see now, isn't that's just so pretty, just lines of cells. Um, I, what I love is when you have the cells, but then you also have the straight lines surrounding the cells. Um, really happy with the sky. So the white is really dominant, which is perfect. So it's nice and pale. And then you've got the contrast with some really dark lines of turquoise. The silver works beautifully because it just gives it that lovely shine and lovely shimmer. So this is the photograph again that I'm going to be basing the embellishments on, which I'm starting now. So I've put a piece of frog tape across. Um, so that is going to be my horizon. So I'm now just hand painting in some cloud, um, some mountains, some clouds, some mountains. Um, to try and get a good perspective, the lighter mountains are going to be um, in the background. So the lighter something is, the perception is that it's further away. So the, the mountains or the hills in the middle were further away in the photograph. And then at the edges, the mountains are darker. So that just um, suggests that they are closer. So I'm working hard to try and get the distinction light in the middle and then darker around the outside just to get the perspective of, for the painting. So I'm just lifting off the piece of tape just to reveal that really nice crisp horizon. And then I'm just adding, if you look at the photograph again, there are, there are lots of trees. You can see the trees on the hills. So I'm just adding a little bit of texture. So I'm dotting some paint on. I'm also just smearing that line slightly because it's so crisp between the two between the hills and the water. So I'm now just getting ready to put my lettering on. So the Iron Man letters. So um, that's the symbol there. I've cut it out. I've, I printed it out to the correct size, um, cut it out. So I'm now just marking on my tape where the, le where the top and the bottom of the letters are going to go. So I can then draw the exact lettering onto the canvas. Just going to show you an example of the actual logo for the actual triathlon she did. So it's dark blue lettering with a lighter blue um, M in the middle, and the M with the circle on the top. That's the I gen that's the general Iron Man symbol, um, but because it's in Austria, it's blue instead of red, which is um, the more well known Iron Man symbol. So I'm now just using a sharpie just to draw the edges of the lettering on. The purpose of the tape at the top and the bottom is just to keep it straight. So if, if I know those pieces of tape are straight, I know that my lettering will be straight. So now I'm just cutting out some of the round letters um, on, from the paper, just so I can literally just draw straight onto the canvas because I want the text to be exact. I want it to be the, exactly the same text font as the brand of Iron Man uses. Right, so all my lettering is done. So now I'm just literally gonna paint it in. Um, I'm using black here. Um, now, 
I later realised that it's actually very dark blue, the lettering. So I'm doing black to start with, um, but then later on, I'm actually going to go over the top and do um, and put a, I think I did it a couple of times, a couple of layers of blue um, to get the, I just wanted it to be the right shade. I wanted it to match as much as possible. And then moving on to the M, this paint I'm using now is a pearlescent blue, um, which I thought would look really pretty, but it's just not the right blue. Um, and I realised that really as soon as I started painting. So I thought, well, I'll finish that. I'll finish it, let it dry and then go over the top. Yeah. So now you can see I'm just going to for um, a navy blue on the letters, not the black. And it actually works really well with the painting because there's so many blues in the painting. It, it sort of blends in a bit better. Right, so I'm now using cerulean blue. That's too light, um, and then I think I think this is cyan blue, um, which I felt was just a better colour for the for the M. So here is the final result. I'm so happy with it. Absolutely love it. Um, it's exactly what I was wanting. So you can see you can see the lake, you can see the mountains, you can see the sky. Um, <clears throat> so as I said, this was just taken from a photograph that my friend put on her Facebook. Um, this is the lake, <clears throat> excuse me, in Austria that she swam in. Um, and then she cycled and ran um, around the lake on the mountains, on the hills. Um, so Ironman is a triathlon. So you, she first of all did the swim and then the bike ride and then the run, the marathon at the end. So I've tried to symbolize those with the little um, pictures. Um, there's a sticker there. I've just covered up her name just for her privacy, um, but she ran it in 13 hours, 23 minutes and 52 seconds, which for an Ironman is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with the end result. Um, oh, the other difference, um, I shaded around the lettering. So I've shaded black on one side and white on the other side. And I think that just lifts it. It gives it this kind of 3D effect. Um, so it just makes it stand out a little bit more from the, from the sort of the chaos of the, the water and the cells beneath, 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 sorry. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Um, I'd love to know other people's thoughts and comments. Do you think this works? Um, I just feel like it's a really wonderful way to be able to celebrate an amazing achievement. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to give this to her um, to, to, yeah, to, to celebrate the incredible achievement that she's, um, she's done, she's had. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button if you like it. Let me know what you think. Great, take care everyone. Bye.